This is just a brief discussion of laboratory safety. Uh, we will go into much more detail in class. While I don't want you to be afraid of chemicals, I certainly do want you to be safe. There is a difference in the toxicity of chemicals, and a skull and crossbones certainly means to show this chemical the respect that it deserves. MSDS sheets list all of the safety issues for a specific chemical, and we certainly will discuss the use of MSDS sheets and your access to them more in class. Obviously, no food or drink is allowed in the laboratory. This includes gum. Gum can absorb vapors from the air. Don't eat or drink from the laboratory equipment. Duh. Obviously, this means do not goof off and act like an idiot when you're in lab. Your work area should be kept as clean and as neat as possible at all times. Certainly there are times when it will get a little out of control. If your work area starts to look like this, stop, clean up, then carry on. Do not smell anything unless you are asked to do so, and then use a wafting motion. Don't stick your nose down into the beaker. Any activity involving poisonous vapors should be conducted in a fume hood. I will demonstrate this for you in class. If you get anything in your eye, notify me and then use the eye wash fountain for a good five minutes to flush out anything that might be in there. For some substances in your eye, you would need to remain in the eye wash fountain for a full 15 minutes. The safety shower is not like your bathroom shower. It is a deluge shower and it is quite cold. It is to be used only in cases of emergencies and I doubt that you're ever going to need to use it. I've never had a high school student use the safety shower, but I will tell you some stories that I have encountered with college students. At times in chemistry, we are certainly going to be using the Bunsen burner and have open flames. You've already had a chance to practice your safety with that in lab, but it will be an ongoing part of your chemistry education. The most common fires that happen in the chemistry laboratory involve hair and clothing. We will discuss how to safely handle these small emergencies next time in class. If you don't know how to use a fire extinguisher, I suggest that you do not use one. If you do know how, then I will speak to you about using one in case of an emergency.